Hey everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Gamer Tales, a show where we kind of just take you on a nostalgia trip on some of our uh, funny video game stories about video games, around video games, mm-hmm. and with video games. Mm-hmm. Joining me today on this first episode, thanks for helping with this this dry run, Steve, or I, I guess this would be a wet run. Yeah, something like that. And, and of course, that's Steven, who yeah. is on the show regularly for our, our little Jolly Gamer Show podcast, where we talk about video games and gaming news, but this is different, like I mentioned. Yeah. Uh, so we thought there's no better way to start this series uh, and by the way, there's going to be no consistency with this series. We're just going to post them when we make them um, because we do find that our show is like kind of like on a bi-weekly basis. So yeah. if anyone wants to squeeze in weekly instead of bi-weekly, we'll do this in place of the show if we don't have anything going on. There you go. Uh, like this week, there's not much going on. I, I haven't been playing anything new. There's like two gaming news stories. Yeah, no, it's, no, it's a slow week. No though, reason so. to stretch out a show for an hour whenever it's only going to take yeah, five so, minutes. So come on down, take a seat next to us while we tell you while we spin you a tale. We're gonna, we're yeah, we're gonna spin you a tale. So just for an example, um, I actually got the idea for this because I was. Uh, I actually watched that documentary, The Last Blockbuster, which I saw. Dude, I watched that the other day too. I'm gonna talk. We're gonna talk about that later um, on a different episode. We're, yeah. we're gonna do an episode on rental stores, not yeah. Blockbuster, on rental Just stores in general. In general, because that was my problem. And we with could give that you the video game perspective because the Blockbuster documentary kind of focused on movies. Correct. Exactly correct. I can't wait. It's gonna be fun. But but for today's episode, we're gonna talk about the game that created an. Uh, an undying, everlasting relationship, and we're talking about Paper Mario. Yep. The Legend of Paper Mario the of Paper and Mario. the Purple Mark. <laughs> what is the Purple I think Mark? We have an episode, I think we have the episode name, Brandon. That, that is it. <laughs> if, what is the Purple Mark? We're going to talk about it, but uh, just some uh, some history on Paper Mario. Uh, just get the boring stuff out of the way. Let, let me uh, let me click through this uh, this Google search for Chrysler Town and Country 2003 model because uh, we, we were looking for inspiration. We, on were, how... we were having a nostalgia trip. Uh, let me click back over here to the Paper Mario Wikipedia page. Um, Steve, this this game came out in Japan in 2000 and on August 11th, mm-hmm. uh, 2000. But in North America, it came out on February 5th, 2001. Yeah. Um, Japan was getting stuff in for us. Yeah, nowadays it's it's kind of uh, everybody's doing the worldwide thing now. Yeah, everybody does worldwide except I think Persona was like one of the last ones to not do that. Mm-hmm. But in our case, we didn't know. Yeah, we didn't back know. In the, back in the day, we didn't know. So let's rewind the clock to two thousand one. I think I was in third grade yeah, you and were in, you were in, I was in fourth, fourth grade. Yeah, we weren't friends. Not at all. No, we lived right around the corner from each other in the suburbs. We rode the same bus, and we, I think. I think the way that it, at least, I I knew of you, like I like. Oh, you knew my legend, the I, legend I, of Brandon. Yeah, the legend of Brandon. But, I mean, I didn't know who the, you the were. The quiet kid who didn't talk to pretty anyone. Much. You see, I was always the type of kid that like I was very aware of the people around me, and so I would get to know, like I would know people by their names and their faces and things like that. So like without ever meeting them, like that that happened with my wife. I mean, I went to Mulberry with Julie, and I knew who she was, but I didn't. Mulberry I didn't know. Elementary yeah, School, exactly, which is. Where me and Brandon went. Home of the Cougars. <laughs> they didn't change that. Yeah. They didn't change that. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, so um, I, I don't. Did you did you know who I was? Or did you I only you? knew. So when the school bus would come to pick us up. Yeah. So, so we we lived in a very large neighborhood. There was multiple school buses that went, that went through the same neighborhood, yeah. right? Yeah, they had three um, different routes for that one neighborhood. Exactly, it's huge, dude. If you ever look at that that neighborhood on Google Maps on satellite view, it's ridiculous. It's yeah. it's huge, you know, and and it's just getting bigger. Like I'm surprised my mom let us ride our bikes in that neighborhood. I'm so telling weird. you, which we broke the rules on a whole bunch of times. We weren't supposed to cross over the the. the uh, the highway, but we did. But we did uh, anyway. Thanks, sorry, Brent. sorry, mom. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Brent. Thanks, sorry, Brent. mom. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so the reason I, I uh, to answer your question, when the school bus would come pick us up, uh, the school bus driver's rule was: when you got on the bus, you walk straight to the back mm-hmm. and you take the next occupied seat. Yep. Boys on the left, girls on the right. And there was no infringing on that rule. No. At all. Yeah. And so you, chances were, if no one, I was about to say call in sick. If no one, if you if you had a kid who was absent, mm-hmm. it would change off the order, but it didn't happen very often. So I was always sitting by the same kid. Yeah, and you were exactly. always sitting by the same kid. And you, since you were the next in the bus, there was like one kid after me. Yeah. And then um, I'd always be like in front, of, like right in front of you, right? You'd be right in front of me, right? Yeah. So um, 
on the school bus, I'd always see like you and your little brother Chris yeah. playing outside, doing stuff, and him yeah. probably being mad, saying, you always cheat, or something like that. <laughs> so that's yeah. the only way I knew who you were. Yeah. Uh, so I knew you were like a nerdy kid because you were outside playing with like swords and stuff. Lightsabers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah and lightsabers, yeah. yeah. And not a lot of kids did that. Brandon saw us like, that's a fellow nerd. Um, yeah. And uh, so that's the only way I knew of you. Yeah. Uh, but it was it was destiny. It was, oh, dude, yeah. It was fate to, to bring us together because some kid, I'm not sure who it was, didn't come into school one day. We and wound so, up sitting next to each other. So that threw off the order of the yeah. kids in which where they could sit. The established order. The established order was was it was uh, it was corrupted. Yeah. So some way somehow the, the sorry I hit the table. Just the right amount of kids were absent that yeah. we had to sit next to each other. Yeah. And I, I guess we were just making small talk. Yeah. Um, one of us had a one of us had a magazine. That's what started it, Like right? a gaming magazine? Yeah, something like, like a, that. Or an instruction manual something or something? like that. I did bring my instruction manuals yeah. to school oh, me a lot, too, dude. So me too. It me may too. have been that. I think it was a magazine, though, because that's what got us talking about about Paper Mario. It was a magazine, right? Like, weren't you... Weren't, one of us was reading the magazine, and, and I guess it caught the other's attention. Like, hey, what you reading? And, and yeah, because like, back in the day, to see other kids playing or, or, or on the schoolyard talking about video games was not normal. Oh, dude, it was no, not, not common. Not nearly because like we it lived, is now. We lived, we, we were just coming out of the, the renegade lawless land yeah. that was the 90s. Yeah. And then we were just getting into the, the new millennium yeah. of 2000, 2001. And so like back in the day, if, if, if I got caught in the in the, uh, the hallway reading an instruction manual for Zelda Ocarina of Time, I was going to get made fun of. Yeah. Or I was gonna not get only that, up. you were going to get made fun of, but also the teachers were going to single you out because if you... Because, like, for example, like, for, like, uh, rainy day uh, recess, yeah, or you had to read a book. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But the thing is, is that there were some teachers who were super anal about that. Yeah, you had and to be if reading. they saw you, it would have to be a literal book. You had to be reading some kind of, like, novel or yeah, literature. exactly. Not, not a, um, an instruction manual, which... Honestly, reading those instruction manuals, sidebar by the way, yeah. reading those instruction manuals helped build up my vocabulary. Yeah, dude, video games build up your vocabulary. I had a great vocabulary for a kid my age. I mean, I was always younger than all the other kids in my class anyway because yeah. I have a late birthday. Um, but yeah, dude, uh, it, someone, one of us was reading something. Now, yeah. it, it sucks that we're so old now that we can't. I know. It's like, it, when I think about it, I see it, yeah. But it's like it's like it's like I've got glaucoma. And I exactly. can't see. It's like you know, it's it's like foggy, but I can see it. I can smell the bus. Like I, exactly. I can smell that carbon monoxide uh, in, in the faux leather in, seats. In the faux leather Ugh. seats that are ripped and have boogers wiped on yeah, them because kids carve, are sick. Carve their names in it and stuff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and Miss Esther yelling in the back. Get off the road, you dummy! <laughs> Our road raging Cajun, road raging, road Cajun. raging Cajun, yeah. the road raging Cajun bus driver, Miss Esther, who always ate frozen grapes on the yeah. bus for some reason. And if, and if you, if she liked you, she would give you some yeah, frozen grapes. Yeah, she's She never gave me anything. No. In fact, only I don't think she liked me at all. I don't know why. She didn't. Uh, she didn't like me either. Um, it's because we were gamers. Yeah, it's because we were it's gamers. We're ga- and honestly, well, yeah. Back to uh, back to reading instruction manuals and being a gamer back yeah. in the day. Um, I think. I think. Teachers would like you less for some reason. And it, it was, was like, a secret society thing. It was like inherently really, really like felt like that. They'd be like, "Okay, it's time for free reading. You know, bring out your books and read it." And then like I would pull out like an instruction manual or like a, a gaming magazine or yeah. something. Uh, that was a little bit later, but they just they they would hate you for it. Yep. I don't understand why. It was so weird. But um, so yeah, we're reading this some kind of gaming um, literature on the bus, and then we got to talking like. Mm-hmm. Like oh you play video games yeah. like yeah I play video games and because uh, it wasn't common like yeah. we said you, it, like it was common for people to play them but it was it was so it out com- of the ordinary for them for, to, to wear it on the outside exactly most for kids they would play games but they wouldn't talk about yeah, it because exactly. like we said you get bullied yeah. but we were just talking and I was like oh really what game are you playing right now and I don't I don't think I had a sixty four at the time I can't remember Brent had the sixty four Brent had the sixty four was, was I playing Paper Mario no it hadn't it hadn't come out yet it was ju- it was about to come out I think I remember knowing that it was yeah. going to come out I was excited was for it and I think. We were talking about it together. Yeah, and that's when I introduced the... That, I, or no, 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 no. Because I think, yeah. did you have it? I can't remember. No, I rented it. You rented it, but... We, but, but that you, was you where had the story it, came from. Yeah, you had it in your possession. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I can't remember. God, we're going to be going back and forth. I know. I, I can't remember. But all I know is that Paper Mario was... was was the either, progenitor yeah, of, of everything. Pretty much. Because th- we were talking about Paper Mario for some reason. I do... Wait, I remember. Yeah. Because I was stuck on a part. So maybe I was playing. Maybe so. Maybe, maybe yeah, we yeah, were yeah. both maybe playing. Because I was stuck on the part where I didn't know where to go mm-hmm. to 
to progress to uh, the fight with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ripoff Koopas. Yeah. And you had gotten past that part. Yeah. You're like, oh, you gotta go talk to the fortune teller guy. He'll yeah. let you through. And I didn't know that because we, didn't, I didn't have the internet to look things up, and I didn't have a, a strategy guide to look it up. And I think I too had rented it. Yeah. Because I, I, we back in the day, you just rented games. You didn't get to buy them. Mm-hmm. And if you did get, if you did get a purchased video game, it was either on your birthday mm-hmm. or it was on Christmas. Yeah, yeah. And you had to be very, very selective about what games you would buy because of that. Or, or uh, not buy, but get, because you you had such a limited option. Like your parents would be like one video game for Christmas, maybe like one for Christmas, two for your birthday, or vice versa. Maybe sometimes if you're lucky, you should catch a sale and get multiple videos. Yeah, get a get a deal. But basically, get buy one you know, get one. And every now and then you'd get K-Mart, a big birthday. Get a Kmart blue light special. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> oh man, the nostalgia is flowing I'm in this telling episode. You, I'm telling you. So that's why we really relied on Blockbuster a whole lot. You know, because oh, yeah. you had to, and we're going to talk about real stores on a separate yeah. episode. I'm, I'm sure Jacob. Don't let me get to. Don't let me get off. No, no Jacob. No, Jacob's going to want to be on that. Oh, yeah, episode, I, want him on that I guarantee one you. Uh, we're going to talk about rental stores, uh, but as far as Paper Mario is concerned, I remember being stuck, and then you told me, and then mm-hmm. I followed up with you from that point on. Yeah. I would lean over the seat, and I would talk to you about... Because we was, couldn't sit next to each other. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, that kid came back to school, and he wasn't sick anymore or whatever. Yeah, screw that kid. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I remember, dude, uh, not going to name drop anybody, yeah. but I remember Jordan Bruce being a total dick. <laughs> And he was like, what are y'all guys talking about? He was so... Uh, I was like, look, he's probably grown and been... He's, probably, he's a good guy. He's now. probably a great a good guy. guy now. But man, he was like your typical bully at the time. Man. And I don't know what it was, but man, he used to give us such a hard time. I remember oh, yeah. talking about video games with you all the time. Yeah. And he would always lean over the seat because he was behind me. Yeah. And he would lean over the seat and he would just like pester us all the time. Right. About like, you know, what games? Y'all you know, play video games or something? He'd make fun of us. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. But yeah, he was a total jerk. I said I wasn't gonna name drop him, but I did. <laughs> it's fine, you know. And, and he's gonna be listening. He's yeah. like, "Those guys are a bunch of jerks." No, 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 no. He's he's good now. I mean, I'm sure. No, he knows. I'm sure. I'm sure he's got some thoughts about us. We we're probably annoying <laughs> yeah, as hell. Him, we so probably it's were. Fine. He's not like some bullies where I'm just like, man, I hope that guy gets hit by a bus. No, no, he's fine. No, he's no. Fine. Well, I, and to be honest, elementary school bullies, in retrospect, not nearly as bad as no. high school bullies. Because I've dealt with bullies my whole life. Yeah. And in high school, way worse. Oh, yeah, way, way worse. Because it got physical. Yeah. In elementary school, I was just like, man, this guy's... You know, if I, if I would have just done that, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones and bullcrap, I would have been fine. Yeah. But, For all we know, he could look at us like we were bullies. I mean, that's yeah, how, that's probably, how probably, was, he was. He, he probably just wanted to talk about yeah, video games so. with us. And he's probably just... He probably didn't know how to do it. Yeah. He probably, or maybe he was afraid. Maybe he played video games and then he didn't want to break that shell because, like we said, you'd you'd get bullied if yeah. you played video games. Exactly. So who knows? Who yeah. knows? Who knows? Yeah. But, but Paper anyway, Mario. Paper Mario. Uh, so Paper Mario. Um, this, this is gonna happen a lot. We're gonna just just bear with us. You know. That, that's the point. That's, that's the point of this. That's, that's the, the point of this. Spinning a tale. Yeah, that's the point of the gamer tales. Yeah. Is that it, it's tales that we want to share with everybody. Yeah, exactly. And the best part is that we can't remember half of it, so know, we have to right? sit here like a bunch of old here for men. like ten minutes, like whoa. Oh, <laughs> We're gonna be sitting here like a bunch of old men trying to recount playing an RPG game from. No, yo, old coot, that's not what happened. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, as time would go on, we would play the game, and then we would that started a relationship because I went over to your house, mm-hmm. and then I got to meet your family, and then that was weird for me and my mom because I didn't have any friends yeah. that I ever went to their houses. Yeah. Brent did. My older brother Brent, he would go to people's houses all the time. He was oh, a social butterfly, yeah. but I didn't. And so like, I didn't have. Uh, I did have gamer friends back mm-hmm. when I lived in Buras a long, long time ago. And see, my clo- and, and you see, like I had friends, but see, my closest friend was my next door neighbor. They moved. Right. So yeah, right. you know, I was I was kind of in the I guess in the search for a new a new person I could call my best friend. You know, no. I mean, aww, I was, aww. Aww. it's gonna it's gonna sound like real romantic almost, but it's it not is. quite like it that. It is. Don't let them lie. It is. <laughs> um, but, no, um, uh, yeah. So we, we play, and uh, you know that started me going over your house. And yeah. We got you know we play games, and you would, you would rent a game, and I would rent a game. I'd yeah. bring games over. Exactly. And, uh, I I introduced you. We can save this story for another episode. I introduced you to some of the games that I had been familiar mm-hmm. with because when I played Paper Mario, I was familiar with the RPGs because I had played a lot of Super Mario RPG. Yeah. And I played a lot of Final Fantasy VII, mm-hmm. and I kind of introduced you into that Final Fantasy yeah. world. Yeah. And uh, my introduction to Final Fantasy VII is going to be a separate. Gamer Tales. I can't well. wait to go over that. That's gonna be. A I gotta good be a part of that one too. That's gonna be a good one. Um, and I'm not gonna remember half of it. <laughs> that's uh, that's what that's what we're here for. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna bounce off each other. Yeah, but we uh, so we, we 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 played Paper Mario, and then uh, the thing about renting a game was when you rented a game, 
you only had about a week. Yeah. And you, uh, was it? It was five days for for games, right? Five days for games, a week for a movie. Yeah. Is that true? So, Eventually, they started doing a week. So but, my mom, we were on a schedule. I think it was like every Friday. Yeah. My mom would pick me up from school. And we would go straight to Blockbuster, and yeah. she would get a movie. And we'll talk about that some other time. Yeah. But um, five days uh, is not enough time to be no, an not RPG game. Now, no Paper Mario is like shorter. Paper Mario, yeah. Paper Mario is uh, a lot easier than most games. But we were kids. You know, I, if I had to take a guess, I was. Probably, I, w- I know I was five years old, mm-hmm. um, maybe going on six in first grade, right? Mm-hmm. So that means I'd be six going on seven, so seven. So I'd be somewhere like seven or eight years old during all this. Yeah. Or no, 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 no. Let's see. Let's no, no, see. I'd be eight. Yeah. And in and, and fourth grade, you're nine. Fifth nine. grade, you're ten. So I was eight grade, going on nine. I would have been. I would have been eight because this came out in February. Yeah. And my my birthday is in September. So See, the way that I, I remember been eight going on yeah. nine. The way I remember my birthdays is is that I'm one one year less. So like 2001, I well, 2001 early on in February I was still um, nine, but then I would have turned so, ten. So yeah, because you're one year older. Yeah. So we, I would have been eight going on nine. You've been yeah. nine going on ten. Yeah. And so exactly. for kids, I mean. You still got to go to school for yeah. pretty much half a day. Then you had to come home, do your homework, and then you had to go to uh, cataclysm. Unless you're me and just didn't do homework. Yeah, I was saying you had to go to you had to go to cataclysm. Catac- <laughs> You had, to, you had to go to categories. On Mondays, I had to go to, go to catechism. So was like the good Catholics we were. So you, you, you lost a day of your yeah, rental. I lost a day, yep, pretty much. <laughs> so you really you got screwed. Yeah, I did. I really Until did. you got the, the, and the then, game. And the, my parents had no, no, no understanding for that at Until all. Until you got the like, unlimited pass. Yeah. So you also had to miss your episode of Dragon Ball Z every day, yeah. too. No, yeah. well, it wasn't immediate. So I, I, was, able oh, so you, home, you, you, I was able to come home and watch, watch my shows. And I may have had a little time, but... You know, most of the time it was like... Dude, I remember... Oh, so. I remember back in the day... Uh, I mean, I would go to your house every day. Mm-hmm. Every day. Oh, I'd yeah, get off dude. the bus, I'd do my homework. Or I was going to your house. And I'd run over to your house, and you'd run over to my house. And, like, I remember there was, like, there was a point where I guess you got to a certain age when you had to go to categories. <laughs> and you, uh, you're like, every Monday, I'd be like, hey, man, you coming over? And you'd be like, oh, no, I can't. I'd be like, oh, man. Yeah. It's, it's, they, they did it kind of like on a semester deal, like... Like there oh, yeah, was, maybe you had like off off seasons. Yeah, there was there was on off season and then there was like in season. It was, oh. it was basically like school. Like if I wasn't in if I wasn't in school, I didn't have to go. But like, well, it was kind of my fault because my parents gave me the opportunity to go to private school. If I go to private school, you don't have to do catechism because you do it in the oh, Catholic man, school. Private school, man, that's for the birds. Oh yeah, that's for the birds. At least down down in terrible. That's the right choice. Up here right is probably up here in uh. Oh, if I if I Baton Rouge is here, probably great. Yeah, if I if I in fact I, I I did I did a um. I did a job up at the the Catholic High. Catholic High. Oh, Holy crap! That's a nice dude. school. That place is legit. Yeah, that is a nice school. Uh, but anyway. Yeah. But anyway. Anyway, back to Paper Mario. <laughs> uh, no, so I remember, um, uh, you know, what, what I was getting at is that five days is not enough time. Oh, no, so no, you'd no. have to go back and rewrite. Now back in the day, you didn't have memory cards. Or you did if you had a PlayStation. Yeah. And so you could save your data and then go rent Start a game. Start where you and, left and then, left off. Yeah, you just come right back. But with Nintendo 64, which is so funny because that's a generational divide and, yeah. and what made PS1 uh, superior in many ways to 64 and 64 superior in many ways to, uh, yeah. to, to PlayStation was, was that fact. Was yeah. that since games are on cartridge on 64... Your save went with the cartridge when you went and put it in the slot. Yeah. Uh, when you turned it back in. Um, so we devised, I think your friend came was, up with the so, idea. So if we're name dropping people, I guess i got to give him the full credit. Uh, it was Brennan St. John's idea. He is the one who put the purple mark on there. So the purple mark. The purple mark. Let's talk about the purple mark. Yeah. So us following that that method, which yeah. was a genius method. Totally. Uh, I commend your friend for gotta, that. Gotta give Brennan, gotta give Brennan all the credit. The, the, I, don't, I don't know if it had to be specifically purple, but let's pretend. That's just what he did. Let's pretend yeah. that it was purple. But what you would do is you would get your Blockbuster game case, mm-hmm. and then you would because they would keep the game with the case, and they would just go restock the shelf. Yeah. So what you would do is you would take the slip cover out, the paper slip cover, and you get a marker in this case, a purple one, and yeah. you would just put a little mark on on the slip like it the was paper. so innocuous, like they didn't even catch on at all. They never put they, they never oh they not didn't care. once did they ever put a replacement. Yeah, they, they, didn't, they didn't no. care. They were just people working jobs back in the day, probably for yeah, probably like yeah. minimum wage, you know. And so you put the mark on the slipcover, put it back. So when you went, because when you would go to the store, they would have all the games lined up, and you would look at, mm-hmm. you know, you go to the Paper Mario game case. They would have the actual box of Paper Mario, and then you would look behind it, like it would have the stock of the games behind it. Yeah. And so you look through the cases, and you see the purple mark, and you know that's the cartridge that's that had cartridge. your save on it. Yep. Now. 
there's only one fatal flaw with the system. Is that if some kid rents that particular specific cartridge, he can go through and delete all of it yep. and then make his own stuff. Yep. And that's what happens sometimes. But you know what's also cool is that you could totally spoil the game for yourself and use someone else's save file. Yeah. Do, you remember, do you remember the Take 5? You remember Take 5? There was someone had a, a, um, a, a game save on Paper Mario that had all the stars. It was 100% complete. Yeah. And the name on the file was Take 5 and it had a star next to it because you could put you could put like symbols. Yeah. It said Take 5 star. Yeah. And so we kept the Take 5. We're yeah, like, let's, yeah, cool, yeah, let's, yeah. Let's, let's peek ahead and see what's the, yeah. you know, like, uh, let's see how this person played the game. So, so you could see that how different people yeah. play the game, where they distributed their stat points and stuff. The, the system was designed at first for Brennan to be able to say, like, uh, like it was kind of a shared thing where it's like we would all build off of his file but eventually what you and I started doing I think we started doing our own thing and keep track of it with that purple mark right? the purple mark yeah, yeah. So, like, we didn't really build on the other one. Because I would rent it, and, like, because if, if I would go to the store and you'd go to the store, yeah. there was a higher probability of one of us finding yeah. that purple mark. So, if I went there and it wasn't there and you went on a different day of the week, it yeah. could have came back and it would have been there. Yeah. So, you could continue the file where we left off, because we, we exactly. were playing together. Yeah. and We know, would play in each other's presence. Yeah. and That's what we would do. So, we would, we would play off of each other's file. Yeah. Um, now, other games, like, you buy a game, like, I don't know... Uh, F zero X. You don't really need. Really yeah, you don't need yeah. a save file. You don't need to do that for the shorter games, but like the Zeldas and the, and the Paper Mario's and the Final Fantasies and things like that. It was good for that. But it was genius because I remember it working. Because I remember we would find our save file. Yeah. I don't remember what it was named. We would name it something. something. It wouldn't be stupid. It'd be like, you know, Brandon and Steve or something, yeah. or it would say like like Mario or something. Yeah. But we would know. We kept we, it simple. We would save it on the number one slot because there was four save files on the mm -hmm. game, and we would mm -hmm. always know when we log in. And we had the time. It yeah. would have the stars, have everything. Because <clears throat> if a kid was, if a kid was kind, it's almost like uh, be kind, rewind. Yeah, is be kind and don't delete all the save. There was the a brotherhood with with decent people. And and this is it was weird because yeah. you could go rent some of the same cartridges and find your old files on there, yeah. and, and they wouldn't be touched. Yeah, like. It, they don't make them like that anymore. No, they don't. Ba back in the day, you know, it, it, there was a, a, a code of honor. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not anymore, but now you play Rocket League and you get cussed out by a three-year-old. Or you go on World of Warcraft and there's political debates raging in trade chat and you're just like, get me out of here. Yeah, dude, man, back in so the day. Toxic. Or like, the, so toxic. Uh, well, I don't want to I don't want to delve into the rental store discussion. But uh, as far as Paper Mario, man, that game, uh, oh, yeah, before we jump into that, I, I do want to say the purple mark. Yeah. Genius. Yeah. Genius. We, like, we, we, uh, what's that Dave Chappelle meme where it says, modern, modern problems, problems require, require modern, modern solutions. solutions, and that was our solution. But wait, there's more though. There's because, more. because what happens to Blockbuster's games when they're ready to move on to the next generation? Oh, they sell them. They sell them. Oh, and man. And guess who acquired the original purple mark, Paper Mario? This, this guy. guy. We gotta Me. go. We gotta go find. It. I know it's somewhere in my house, but I'm gonna get it. We gotta and go we're find gonna preserve it. it. We gotta find. I will bring it here. I will. I will put it in a frame and put it on the wall because that Hell game. Yeah. I have a cartridge of Paper Mario over there, but it's the, it's the the benefit. Of I, the dude, it's, it's exactly so. Like you don't have that one, do you? Which one is that one that's got property of Blockbuster? That's not it. That's a Conqueror's Bad. Program. Okay, no. Because uh, so, it's gonna have the, uh, it's gonna have an no. art on it. Yeah, because they, they, they have they have the stickers yeah. on the on the cartridge. Yeah. Um, blockbuster. yeah, man, they ruined all the the, the uh, I mean, that was their way of, of, of asserting their property. Over well, that was it. the thing about the cartridges back in the day was like um, I can't remember if it's like a PS One game if you rented it. Did it come with the jewel case in the the blockbuster case? Or no, was it just you got the, the blockbuster case. Or was it just the discs just in that the case? Disc. Ugh, ugh, those discs would get so scratched up. Yeah. We'll talk about that some other time. I really but, didn't rank PlayStation games, though. No, like, but the, the 64 games were really kind of where I hung out. Because mm -hmm. uh, after after that, I we, mean, yeah, you I didn't, didn't, I didn't start, we didn't start using rental stores until, yeah. you know, kind of late. Yeah. Um, and you didn't have your own 64, so you right. couldn't get your own games for it. I guess right. the rule... Well, no, you, you did I was always a generation game. behind. Yeah. So I still... I mean, I was playing Super Nintendo in my room, yeah. and then Brent had the 64 in his room. Yeah. Because it was his. And he had the PlayStation 2. Yeah. Right. Well, we we all got... Oh, yeah, y'all pitched in. Yeah, we all... Yeah. We'll, we'll talk... Maybe we'll... That's another gamer tale. We'll put yeah. it on the list. More gamer tale. Uh, we need to get Brent out here to do the gamer yes, tale. Yes, we do. I need to tell him. He's going to be... Poor gonna, Brent's so busy being a father. He's going to be so excited doing yeah. that. Um... But yeah, um, Paper Mario was was a great game. 
Mm-hmm. I know we're, we're talking about the legend around it, but let's talk about the game itself. Yeah, we got to now, we're not going to talk about development history or anything like that. This isn't like a concentrated analysis of this game. It is just us talking about our experience with it. Yeah. And I, like I said, coming off of RPGs, I loved RPGs, and they were my favorite games. I don't know yeah. why. I remember I used to rent Mario RPG. Super Mario RPG over and over. I used to go. I, my mom would turn it in, and we'd go to the store, and I would rent it again. Yeah, because I just loved that game so much. Um, and eventually, they made it to where you could just—you don't even have to turn it in yeah, if you want to rent it. You just go and, say, "Hey, I want to extend my rent." Yeah, and this was a um, a continuation, a spiritual yeah. successor to that game, mm-hmm. because as we know. Square uh, SquareSoft would move to PlayStation because of the, the cartridge limitations. Yeah. They were making Final Fantasy VII at the time. So Square didn't make this game. They yeah. made, uh, uh, who was it, Intelligent Systems made yeah, this game. Yeah, I believe uh, so. I can pull it up. I've got the Wikipedia yeah, page right up. here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Intelligent Systems yeah. made the game. It even says here that Nintendo planned to have Square develop Paper Mario, uh, but the company was occupied developing Final Fantasy VII for the PlayStation, so Intelligent Systems developed the game instead. Yeah, Square was always a second party back in the day. They, they stayed with Nintendo. But oh, then, they were like, yeah, they were they, they were, were all about best Nintendo. pals. I mean, Final yeah. Fantasy back in the day. Every on the single Super one. Nintendo. Yeah, every single one. And, and after six. And the, the problem was that the president of Nintendo at the time was too stubborn to go with CDs. And, um, it cost them. And we even know about the, the, the Nintendo PlayStation story, about how they're, they were going to be together. But then they split, and Sony was like, well, we can make our own. And then that's, that's history. Yeah. Um, but... Paper Mario is the best RPG on the Nintendo 64, in my opinion. Yeah. Because what else is there? Exactly. The Ogre Battle 64, Quest 64. Quest 64 had some moments, but it wasn't good. I, it wasn't. It wasn't. There's just memorable stuff. It like, wasn't cream of the crop. No. Nah. But Paper Mario was, man. Paper, Paper Mario, Mario was. was the tactile input re- re- uh, return from um, mm-hmm. Super Mario RPG where the timed hits, but yep. they kind of expanded on it. Yep. They did the... Uh, or pull the hammer back, hold the hammer, ha- and hold the ha- go. Yep, holding the hammer back. Yep. Now, I think... I can't remember if that was on Paper Mario or if that's a thousand years. It had to be on Paper Mario because you haven't played Thousand Year Door. So you would have remembered. But like, yeah, I remember, yeah. uh, timing your hits correctly. But shame on me. Why have I not played that? You game? need to play that game. It's because it came you. out after you moved. Oh man, I'm, sure, really I'm sure you can emulate that bug. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna look into emulating uh, some stuff. I mean, acquiring it legally. Yeah. <laughs> because you can't buy that game. Um, oh, there's, there's my child. Um, oh, Vincent's just got some stuff to say. That's yeah. He's like, guys, you're forgetting to talk about the badge system. Yeah. He's like, why are you talking about the badge the system? Badge! The badge, the badges the were badges. great. The badges were how you were able to customize mm-hmm. your your Paper Mario playthrough, right? Yeah. So every time you level up, you know, I mean, it's a typical you know turn based game. Uh, you you win a battle, you get experience points, yeah. and then you can put those points. Or after you get a hundred experience points, you can choose to level up either your HP, your FP, or your BP. Yeah. Uh, health points, flower points, and badge points. Badge points let you uh, equip more badges, mm-hmm. and the equipping badges is basically like selecting your uh, special your attributes bonus, yeah, or your, your bonus special or yeah, yeah. Or special moves. Yeah. Um, so you can have a, a badge that's like it prevents a certain status ailment from happening, or you can have one that increases your jump power by two mm-hmm. or whatever. Or you can have one that protects you from when you're jumping on spiked enemies. Yeah, and that I mean, the better it is, the more badge points it's going to yep. cost. So you want to invest in having badge points, yep. but you want to balance it because you don't want to have not enough HP and get one exactly. shot by an enemy later in the game because the game is level scaled yep. uh, or like it's set. It, it doesn't scale. It with made you. you really think about your choice. And then your flower points were your MP or your magic points. So you yeah. really wanted That's to, your equivalent of like man. And so like every time you get a level up in that screen, the curtains would drop down and the confetti all over the place. And it, it would be playing that, that yeah. music in the back. The, yeah. Uh, I'm right playing it playing right now. Playing it right now. Uh, okay. And then you'd have to you had to decide on which one. And it was such like, depending on where you're at in the game, it's like, man, do I want more HP? Exactly. Or do I want more... BP. It really factored in on your decisions because it's like, okay, you know, the HP is going to keep me alive, but the FP is going to take away from my damage, and the BP is going to prevent me from doing these special moves because you know you you you're you're more powerful if you can mix and match your badges. But if you don't have enough BP, have you ever heard of the Danger Mario Run? No. no the Danger Mario Run is whenever you put all of your <clears> points <throat> in the BP, uh, maybe some in the FP. You put all of them in the BP, and you keep Mario at the peril point which is one HP wow. because there's a badge in the game that increases your power tenfold as long as you only have one HP Wow! so it means that there's no room for error and there's people that will do speed runs where they will keep Mario at one HP so he's super powerful but they'll dodge and parry everything wow. it's 
crazy. I don't think I could do that. It's called it's called the danger the danger Mario. Danger Mario. Run. See, I love I love and, challenges. Like and so that. what's cool is that this game with the customization was it allowed you to do things yeah. like that. And it's like, well, if you want to play it safe, you just want to have like a bunch of HP and have hardly any special moves. You could, you, do could that. you could do that. If you want to be a meat shield like that, you can do that. Or if you want yeah. to focus on dealing damage, or if you want to focus on putting up all the cool badges. Yeah, I usually do just balance it out yeah. because I'm not, I'm not creative enough. Yeah. Uh, but um, that, and then also this <clears> game <throat> was designed of. Uh, the, when it first was designed, it was pitched as a 2D game with sprites with 3D mm-hmm. backgrounds, mm-hmm. and that's when they decided, well, it's flat like paper. Let's make a paper game, Paper Mario. Yeah. And so the paper at this point in the Paper Mario franchise, yeah. it was just an aesthetic. Yeah, you know, the characters were made out of like what looked like paper. Like they had the, the dark outlines around them. They uh, sometimes like the pages would turn to create yeah. a bridge, yeah. or like Mario would fall in, like a piece of paper. Exactly. Yeah. Um, they would break the fourth wall, and like yes, it's all paper. But you know, it was it's made, still yeah. supposed to be a serious story. But let's like when Mario falls, he floats down and, like paper. And, yeah, they didn't go far with it at all. And then in the later games, uh, in Thousand Year Door, they they kind of had met the threshold for me. And then after that, they it was all about the paper being yeah. like front and center, yeah. which we'll talk about later. But um, that aesthetic on the sixty four, that game still looks good. Oh yeah, it still looks good. Like, not only was everything 2D, but the art style. I had never seen Mario like this before yeah. with his little, like, little, li- little his, black eyes. His little black pupils and yeah. no, like, blue. Like, he looked like a totally different character, like a like a Disney drawn, yeah. like, like Steamboat Willie style character. And he was animated like that, too. Yeah. And, like, that game coming off of Super Mario RPG, it kind of followed the same thing with, like, going to the different towns. You go to a Goomba village, you go to a Koopa village, you go to the Bomb village, and you meet all these different, like, races of... Uh, Mario characters, mm-hmm. and they're not just hostile enemies you jump yeah, on. Yeah, they're actual. They're people. characters with stories, and then not to mention, you always have a partner with you. So yeah. it's not just Mario; you have your helpers. So like, you start off with Goombario. Goombario. And it's it's so fun the very the very first time you meet Goombario, which is a little Goomba with a baseball hat and a baseball cap, and then you meet his family, Goompa and, and Goompapa, uh, uh, Goompapa and Goomma and uh, Goomma. I forget his sister's name, but um. He what had, is her name? I can't remember. But he huh. would, he would. Uh, it's not Goombella. That's the. Well, that's uh, from. I'm about to see. That's from Thousand Years. I'm old. looking it up. I gotta but, know. But what was cool was all your side characters had their own stories too. Like uh, Coops had a story where he had to go. Um, like I, I can't. I'm, I'm gonna get him mixed up with the other uh, Koopa character from Thousand Year Door. Mm-hmm. But they all had their own stories and their own towns that they had to return to, and they had their own fighting styles with their own special moves. And you could upgrade them by finding those special blocks in the environment. So yeah. You were incentivized to explore and find all these different things. And some of those characters, such as the fish, uh, the Lakitu character, Spike, and Paracarry, they had traversal uh, skills that would help you traverse yeah, certain parts yeah, of the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you couldn't you couldn't go any further until you found those characters. Exactly. And every time you found a new character, you just wanted to explore and play with those characters because they all played completely different. Yeah. Like, remember Paracarry's little thing where, like, the little, he had, like, the little Yoshi style uh, trajectory where yeah. it would kind of go up and down. You had to hold the uh, analog stick back and shoot them. Yeah. Uh, that was so cool. Or, like, sometimes you had to charge up the shell for. Uh, for was it uh, Cooper? For yeah, Cooper, Cooper. You would have to tap A and, like, uh, charge the shell and he would go flying across or something. Yeah. Um, so that was a lot of fun, too. And then the story, now, in Paper Mario, it wasn't anything too special, because at the end of the day, it is just Bowser kidnapping uh, Princess Peach and taking her somewhere, and you gotta go save her. Uh, that that narrative would get way better in Thousand Year Door. Uh, but the adventure in all the different side bosses, like, you get to go to a tropical island and fight a giant flame-breathing piranha plant, yeah. and you get to meet this village of Yoshis, and you get to uh, go to, like, this snow land, and you get to go to um, the desert the place desert with, the, the uh, with the booze. And the haunted forest. The haunted, and remember Tubba Blubba? The Blubba? thing that freaking eats booze. Yeah, the Tubba Blubba. Yeah. Remember Tubba Blubba? And then you get to go to a haunted mansion. Yeah, and you go yeah. to the, you go to the star mountain where like all the stars are falling. Yeah. And then you find out the sub story where every time you're beating a boss, you're getting, you're freeing these star spirits. Yeah. And the star spirits. you spirit, could use the star spirits. And the star powers. spirits would unlock those powers in yeah. battle. And so like the whole point of the game was to get the help of the star spirits to get up to Bowser who's pretty much in space. Borderline, and invincible. Borderline space because he built a castle underneath 
Princess Peach's castle and lifted it into the sky, and you can't get there without the help of the Star Spirits. He's got the freaking Star Rod, and he's invincible now. Yeah, and so you need those Star Spirits to dispel the power of the, the Star Rod, because otherwise, he's invincible. Yep. You find that out in the first five minutes of the game, where you're fighting him, and he wipes the floor with you. For the first, I think that's like the first time that, that yeah, uh, yeah. like canon-wise, at the, least. Yeah, the game started, because Super Mario RPG, the game starts with you kicking Bowser's butt, and this one, he, he kicks, he, he beats you and kicks you out of the castle and you fall back down to Earth, mm-hmm. or assuming Earth. You fall back down to the Mushroom Kingdom, and that's yeah. where you fall in the Goomba Village, that's where it all starts. But each chapter is different with a different aesthetic, and the music in that game is really, really good. I remember... My brother Brad was able to get Paper Mario music off a of Napster. Yeah. And burn it onto a CD. Brad I, the pirate. Because when I would play with my toys, I would play, I would put video game music on, on my, my, time, my jam box. Yeah, man. And then we would play with the toys with the Paper Mario music and then like the Final Fantasy music going at the same yeah. time. Real quick, uh, I found her name. It's Goombaria. 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 Goom- Goombaria. Goombaria. Maybe? Yeah. I don't know. That sounds better. Because they didn't have, um, they didn't have voice acting. Yeah. yeah. And that it, sounds and better and though. Nintendo Boomeria. still don't. Yeah, and a lot of things. Um, but no, um, that game was incredible, and it, it was it was kind of rough. Yeah, uh, it was. in the end, uh, I remember having some issues fighting the last boss. Not um, easy. But I remember beating that game and being so excited because uh, I remember we beat it pretty early when yeah. it came out. We were like, "Oh, we might be the th- some of the first yeah. people in the world that beat it." Probably and, not, but you know, Brent, you, Brent, will, think Brent will make fun of us to this day because we were like so not gullible, but like we were just excited that yeah. we were able to beat a game like that because that was a, that was a pretty long game. I mean. Mario 64, like, generally people play platformers. Yeah. And, like, some of those games, like Yoshi's Story, that game, you could beat that game in one sitting. Or, like, um... Mario, Mario felt like it took an, it took an effort. You know? it, it, it took, took, a, it real, took a, a real long effort. Yeah, and, and not a lot of games on the 64 had that. You had to invest a lot of time in there. Absolutely. And, you had um, to get you a lot of uh, jam and jelly. Uh, yeah, dude. The jam items, and jelly! The items, like, I just love the aesthetic of the game. Oh, dude, uh, they I had love, so many clever names. Like, the, the way the, the Koopas were drawn, the dialogue is yeah. funny. Um, and, man, it only gets better with, with Thousand Year Door, man. Oh, yeah. It only gets better. And, um, as far as, I don't, am I missing anything here? As far as the game's concerned? I mean, we're not going to, no, like, we we're not going to review really, it yeah, like yeah. like we did Final Fantasy VII Remake or, or any of the new games that we play. What's your favorite part of it, I guess? I guess we could kind of talk about our favorite areas and stuff like that. Uh, of Paper Mario? Yeah. Let me pull up a chapter list. Do you know what your favorite is? I do, but I want to hear yours first. Okay, uh, let me, um, let me look up the chapters, uh, because I... I had to get a refresher. Look, there you go. Okay, so there is Storming the Cooper Brothers Fortress, uh, The Mystery of Dry Dry Rooms, The Invincible Tub of Blah Blah, uh, Trials in the Toy Box. That, that was my least favorite, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, hot Hot Times on Lava Lava Island, Dark Days in Flower Fields. Oh my gosh. Uh, a Star Spirit on Ice. Um, You know, honestly, I think I need to replay Paper Mario yeah. as an adult. Yeah. Because uh, the last time I've played Paper Mario all the way through, I, I was like a preteen. Yeah. Um, I need to play through it too. I think I like the story of the Invincible Tub of Blubba because mm-hmm. you, you get to fight his freaking heart because he's immortal. Yeah, you can't do any damage at all. Uh, at all. But I also like the uh, the ice, the snow one, mm-hmm. because remember the dungeon? Oh, that was with, always your thing, ice. The, I like the dungeon with the mirrors and like yeah. the illusions and stuff. Yeah. Um, but you were always prone to liking ice stuff anyway. I mean, uh, your AIM screen name was Ice Blaza. Yeah, that's right. Ice Blaza 7. That's right. Yeah, I'd say either the ice one. I don't know. I mean, these are all pretty good. Yeah, I know. I think I'm gonna, Honestly, I think I'm going to go with the Koopa Bros. Koopa Bros were fun. They were funny. They were a comic relief. They were like a ripoff of the Teenage Mutant Ninja yeah. Turtles. They were in like a Trojan horse. And the music Bowser. was pretty cool. And the music is really, really good. Mm-hmm. I know we said earlier the music is good in this game. Oh, dude. And there's so many good tracks. It only gets better, but... Um, it only no. gets better. Uh... Yeah, the music's really good. Oh, yeah. I've been playing it this whole time. This whole time I've been playing it. Um, but yeah, I, I think... I think. I mean, pretty much all these are good. Oh, yeah. They're all good. The, probably my least favorite is the toy box one, because yeah. it, it didn't make any sense, because you just jump into a toy box, and then you're in another world. Full mm-hmm. of, the, the battle's fun against the Shy Guy um, general. Yeah. But... It's kind of frustrating, because it felt like... See, I've never, I never have been a fan of the type of backtracking stuff. Like, any game where you're going through the same area but it's different like I don't know like to me I like to see the differences in environments 
And so I felt like a lot of the time what you're doing in the toy box is, is like you, you go to the upper right hand corner, press a button and it flips out, it flips something over. Yeah, and it was all side. like... And I felt like it was so tedious, you, you know, do, like that's why uh, I really hate the water temple <laughs> in, you, in yeah, Ocarina of Time. You do get, um, you do get a cool party member there. You get the little, oh, you get Watt. Yeah, he's cool. Which like, is like a little like baby, a, a little baby spark and he lights up dark mm-hmm. rooms and stuff. Uh, you know, for the longest time I thought that was his nose. But that's, that's it's a, a little, little yes, yeah, a little baby, a little uh, doony. Doony, yeah. Uh, uh, concerning the water temple, I think the water temple is good. I think it's the controls and the um, the systems that keep it back. Yeah. Because uh, if you play the 3DS version, it's actually pretty nice. The Master Quest version is actually easier. I thought because you can it's you not can as put, you can put on the iron boots. Yeah. With those touch that's screen, good. you don't have to pause and turn them on. But there's <clears> yeah, <throat> yeah, you, yeah, you can put them on and sink and put them on float. Yeah, it doesn't. You can just tap and you don't have to pause it. Uh, maybe we'll talk about Ocarina Time one day. Uh, but I think that's pretty much it, Steve. Yeah. I think we kind of nailed it. What um? Cause I, I, we, there's a whole lot more we can talk about, but we'll, we'll be we'll be intruding on the rental store discussion we're gonna have. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Um, this is kind of a, and this is kind of like a brainstorming run too to see how we want this to go. Anyway, so. I think it's great. I mean, yeah, we're already at 40 minutes. I know, that's, that's pretty amazing. Great. I didn't. I didn't it's realize nice, we, nice short sweet. We actually went up over than what I anticipated. Yeah. But. Uh, but but the coolest thing about this whole story is that this game, like I started with, created a friendship, and that it was because Here we are today. it's because of Paper Mario. And because of video games and Nintendo and being a nerd that we were able to realize that we had stuff in common and we were sitting two feet from each other. We, yeah. never, we never talked to each other until we realized that we had things in common. Yep. Uh, and then I mean, we've been playing video games. We've been talking about video games ever since. And like I moved, I moved away, like and we still were really far friends. away, yeah. and we still to this day moved to the other side of the damn state. I know, man, that was miserable. You went from we, like, like, like you gotta understand when Brandon Brandon started off at the tip of the state, like Beerus, like Beerus ain't even on the map no more. Okay, Beerus was like we on from, the very, very bottom, the, like the, the southernmost point in Louisiana. Literally, there's a sign that said you had to turn around because yeah. the the world ended right there. Pretty much. Then he moved to Homa, and then he went to the freaking northernmost part of the state, practically. And old Calhoun, I was, one, I was one parish away from being Arkansas. Yep. Now, a funny story, um, all, you know, I, I could have been out of state, because my, um, my dad's job is while we moved, and yeah. I think he was going to go to Texas. Yeah, ooh. And, uh, which... Who knows how that would have turned out. There's an alternate it. reality somewhere where we moved to Texas. I thought it would have made a difference because, hell, y'all were all the way Well, the thing, I mean, it, it, I think there was trouble in paradise. And my mom was like, hey, we're going back where my family is because I don't want to live where my family's not. Yeah. Which is understandable. Yeah, absolutely. Especially these days as everyone gets older. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I think we would end up back in Louisiana at some point. It's oh, more yeah. in the area that I'm in now because yeah. that's where all my family is and you know, refugees of Katrina and all that. Bureau, and, so and a lot of the Bureau folks settled in Denham, so... Yeah, the yeah, and there's a strange community of, like, refugees from, from there and they're here. It's really yeah. a strange story. Um... I mean, it makes for a good story. I mean, look, at, look at us. I mean, it does. Yeah, we, have, uh, we have one hell of a story when you think about it. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting, dude. It's, very. It's, it's interesting how it all worked it out. It just goes to show that, you know, you don't really, you don't know who's around you until you like, 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 and I guess the only thing that I would suggest to other people listening, you know, is just like, don't be afraid to like branch out. You know? Yeah, like, don't be like, afraid, don't be afraid to share with other people, like mm-hmm. share your thoughts with someone. And don't, you, you might not realize it's someone that you think is weird or different. Or, you thought I was weird. I'm yeah, do you? I saw your head. I was oh. like, God, look at this kid's head. <laughs> look at the top of his head. I was just kidding. I was like, I don't want to talk to this weirdo. No. But like, but back in, I was. I, was, I said the same thing about you. Yeah, back in the day, I was scared to talk to anyone because right, I got, good. like I said, I got bullied a lot, and I. But, you never know who's friend or foe. And like, know? I'm not. I'm. It's not. It's no one's fault. But like, I was the youngest of my generation, and like, all my brothers had a cousin to hang out with, but I didn't. So I had video games, and so all I trusted in was video games because video games wouldn't be mean to me. Video exactly. games wouldn't bully me, and uh, to find someone else who had that same connection was rare. Yeah, uh, very rare. And it, that didn't change until probably until was, we were about in high school, where yeah. video games about the Xbox when the Xbox 360 came out. That's when it started to kind of get accepted that like, oh, you can. Um, you can play video games and not be a nerd. Yeah, nowadays it's like the uh, video game nerds are the popular. Well, now players. now you see sold out shows for MCU for, yeah. co- for comic book movies. Yeah, and you see PS5 sold out everywhere, and you see 
kids playing Fortnite and Among Us. And, and Twitch has just exploded. You, you have people watching other people play video games. Insane. Nowadays. It's crazy. Insane, dude. It really is crazy how things have changed. And you know what? Um, I'm thankful for that. I mean, I know... It has its pros, it has yeah, its cons. Yeah, it has its pros, it has its cons. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm thankful for it because... It really gives you a way to connect to the better to the younger generation because I think Absolutely. I think you know with our generation we were the last generation to say or, or, or I take the back the generation before us was the last generation to be like we're going to be shaped by our parents and I think our generation came along just like you know what I'm tired of the status quo we're gonna you know we want. we want to be we we wanted to be accepted so badly with the things that we loved and the things that we were passionate about we changed. And, and you're right. And with time, video games have changed. the the uh, The stance on video games have changed because back in the day, it was like school shooting, video games. Mm-hmm. Uh, some kid got murdered, video, video games. games. The video games is always the problem. And um, uh, if you played video games, like that, like all of the problems were attributed to video games back in the day. Yeah, that that was always it because like all oh, your kids staying inside, and it's 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 inherently violent and stuff. And you know now it's they try to pull that card, but then they're just like, because uh, some dude, t- some politician will be like, oh, it's video games, and everybody like, shut and up. Everybody's like, here's, here's studies that yeah. say you're wrong. And shut everyone's up. like, shut up, and then he goes away. Yeah. Um, but but now, like, I was just, you know, my, my nieces and nephews were over not too long ago, and I was playing Mario Kart. Yeah. And as my, my nieces and nephews are very outdoorsy, they love sports. They're the, they're really good at it. I can't relate. They are all. I can't relate. But you know they what? They got that Allen gene. That's but why. You, you know what I can relate to? I can relate to when we all get together and we play Mario Kart or Mario yep. Party, and then they're like, Uncle Brandon, how to do this, how to do that. And I'll tell you one thing. My niece, Stella, I'm, I'm not lying. She almost beat me legitimately in Mario Kart. Wow. On, on Rainbow Road. Whoa. Super Nintendo version. Whoa. With no guardrails. Whoa. And I, and I turned off her safeties. Wow. She almost beat me. Wow. Wild. Shout, wow. Out, shout out to Stella. She's Stella. awesome. We were playing, uh, we had streamed, uh, our family game night the other night we played Mario Party and we played Mario Kart and Blaine's pretty good at Mario Kart dude, Blaine's really good at Rocket League Rocket League y'all need right. to get on with him yeah he's good dude well our new motto is yeah uh, uh, we, we heard him talking smack to someone we, that our new motto yeah. in Rocket League is I wanna win by five <laughs> maybe six <laughs> yeah, so anytime we play Rocket League uh, but no dude Paper Mario and, and it's so cool because Paper Mario being the progenitor has brought me to where I am, whether that's a good thing or bad thing, where I've wanted to be creative with video games, and I, I can't make video games, I'm not super artistic, I'm not super We creative, don't know anything about coding. But I can make a podcast, and yeah. I can talk about it, and we can share the good word, we can spread the good spread word. Spread the good word. Of Paper Mario. And if you can get your hands on Paper Mario, please play it, share it with a friend, go get a cartridge, and then one weekend you play it, and the other weekend make your friend play it, and share your stories together. And if you have any stories you want to share with us, let us know. You can always email the show at littlejollygamershow at gmail.com. Yep. Uh, but I think that's it, Steve. I think that's it, and man. Before, before we end, some things I want to see from you on this show. Mm-hmm. But while I'm thinking about it, I want to I want to talk about first times we got consoles. Yes. I want to talk about the first time you got the GameCube. Love Cube. that idea. I want to talk about the first time you got the GameCube. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about the first time you got the Game Boy Advance. I want to talk about... Yep. Because I remember. I remember being over there. Yeah. Um, I remember walking into your house, like you, you, like you, your dad, your brother, all y'all yeah. were playing Super Smash Brothers Melee. And <laughs> the door was y'all just like the doors open. Yeah. I walk in, and I just remember Great Bay. You were playing. I don't remember who you were. But I was I'll, Link. I guarantee you, I was Link. I, remember, I had unlocked Young Link. I, I specifically I remember, remember Dad. Blue, Blue DK. Dad was Blue DK. <laughs> your dad, your dad is always Blue DK. <laughs> And dude, I, Every time, I don't know I, what it I'll was. I'll never forget things like that. And he was always Blue DK on the 64 version too. He never really played the 64 version a whole whole lot, but he he would you know you know how dads are. Dads would be like, "What you doing, son? Are are you winning, son?" But like you know, sometimes he'd like come grab grab a controller and sit down and play with me. You know, like make an effort to, to hang out with me. And so I, we'll talk about it more. Yeah, in, in well, episode. do me a favor. We'll, we'll format it, and if the listeners have any suggestions, feel free to let us know. Um, but we'll format it in ways like, you know, our experience, first time playing GameCube, yeah. first time playing PS2. We go through the generations. And we can share our stories that yeah. way. Uh, and this is this is our... Gamer Tales is a show where we can do that without breaking mm-hmm. the format of the other show. Yeah. Because the other show is specifically what we've been playing lately and what's going on in the gaming sphere, like, newest, latest, best, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, but really, this will be a way for us to talk yeah. about... 
And we had another idea for another show called Concentrated Analysis, uh, where we're gonna like really deep dive on a specific yeah. game and just talk about the game as a whole, uh, which the first one will probably be Resident Evil 4. <laughs> um, but uh, no, do me a favor, just think about Gamer Tales, man. Because yeah, yeah, this would be a really easy way to... I really like this format because I feel like we could kind of break off on these little tangents and we could call side quests to the main story. Yeah. Because it's like, because you know, like like talking about the talking about the van, that's like a side quest to the main story of Paper Mario. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, talk about all these different things. Precursor, we were, talk, much, we were talking yeah. about uh, we were talking about my mom's yeah, Chrysler sorry. Town and Country. We were debating on what kind of van it, it was we, before we, that. Yeah, we were trying to find which was a Dodge Caravan. It was a Dodge Caravan. Dodge Caravan yeah. was like a well, 90, Janelle, Janelle, it was, Janelle. It was a 90 something yeah. Dodge Caravan. It was blue. Like 99 maybe because oh, it was man. the same kind of caravan my mom had except it was a difficult. Time. Oh man. But anyway, stay tuned for more of these episodes. Like I said, if you have any suggestions yeah, for us. Thanks for joining me, Steve. That was a great that episode. That was a great episode. Alright, let's get this thing out. Yeah!